Hey, Dan from danwagner.co with a tutorial on how to combine many Excel files into a single sheet Excel file, which will make it really easy to analyze these different data sources all in one single pivot table. So imagine in this case, we've got a handful of data files. They're all stored in this one folder. Uh, it's in blog example data in here on my machine. The files themselves have a variable number of rows, but they all have the same columns. And so um, we're going to combine all this data together into one single file. But also, as a nice finishing touch on this, we're going to add one additional column to the final data file that indicates which Excel file the subsequent rows all came from. So in this particular case, it would be like we had an extra column, column E, that was called AT underscore April underscore 16 dot XLSX. And that way in our final data file, it'll be really easy in that eventual pivot table to know where the source data came from should we need to investigate some more. Cool. So let's go ahead and get started on the VBA itself. First things first, we're going to set up a few references in the beginning here. Uh, we define the folder where all of our data files are going to live. And then we create a destination workbook and a destination worksheet, which is going to make it really easy to paste data to the eventual uh, destination file, which is going to be really helpful at the at the end of our code here. Then we're going to take advantage of this DIR function, which is built in and super helpful when it comes to getting information from a single directory using VBA. We use the string directory containing files, which we declared up here in our references. And we look for any file in that folder that ends with .xlsx. And so um, we're going to store all of these file names in a collection, which is going to make it really easy to loop through the file names a little bit later on in the script as we open up each file, grab its data, and paste it to the destination. And uh, the, the macro here includes a little checkpoint, which should be commented out in the article, but I have uncommented it out for easy debugging and validating that the individual steps that we're taking are going to work the way we expected. So what I'm going to do here is run the macro and make sure that um, the collection of file names gets generated correctly. We expect it to have AT April, AU April, AV April, AW April, um, and we're going to print that to the debug screen, or excuse me, to the immediate window. So I'm going to press play and sweet. It looks like our collection contains everything we need. So we can comment that bit back out and keep moving along through our code. So now we're going to start looping through each of those individual source files. Um, we're going to open up each file using the folder directory because we know that um, each file is in one folder and we know each file name and we can combine that with the slash to get the full file path. We're going to assign that source data workbook and worksheet right here. We're going to take advantage of the last occupied row number and last occupied column number functions. Um, which for this example, I went ahead and copied down to the bottom of the script so we can reference them. But if you're using the VBA tool belt, and you totally should be using the VBA tool belt, you'll have access to those functions right away since they are built in and they come with the tool belt. And so what we're doing here is we are, uh, we're taking that source data file and we're grabbing all of the information right from the top left hand corner, which is uh, cell A1, right, row one, column one, to the last row 
and the last column, which will be the bottom right hand corner. So this is another good checkpoint here. We want to make sure that using these lines gives us exactly the range we're looking for. And so I'm going to press play again. We come up to our breakpoint. I'm going to click over to AT April 16. We throw that on one side, throw the code on the other side. And let's make sure that we can select the full source range and that it gives us all the rows and all the columns that we would expect. Sweet. So it looks like this worked as expected. We have selected the full range, including the headers, which is an important note for this particular exercise. So I'm going to comment these out and we're going to hit stop. I'm going to close that out, close that out, and close that one out as well. Okay, cool. So here's the next consideration. Uh, on the first pass through, we want to make sure that we include the header rows, but on each subsequent loop, we want to skip the header rows, right? We only want to copy the header rows over one time. And so what I'm going to do here is uh, run another example right, and verify that this if statement correctly skips the header rows on every cycle except for the first cycle. So let's go ahead and we'll verify this selection works, even though we're going to comment it out once we're running the real script, um, just to make sure that on the second pass, we wind up with all the data selected, but not the headers. So let's go ahead and click play. And once again, throw the code over on this side, on this side. So this is our first iteration, right? So it should, on this select, grab all the data, including the headers. Sweet. It did, and that is great. So I'm going to actually undo those stop points. We'll review those a little bit later. And let's go ahead and make sure we're on the destination. So when we click play, there are no runtime errors. OK, great. And so what I'm going to do is comment this section out, and we'll review this a little bit later in the script. OK, cool. So this is the second iteration. We're on this AU file. We started with the AT file. And we want to make sure that this time around, instead of selecting everything, including the headers, we select just the data itself. Another stop point here. Sweet. So it looks like this logic works as expected, which is great. So I'm going to click stop, and I'm going to comment all of that out as well. Cool. So then on our destination file, right, which is book three in this case, but next time it's going to be book four as I restart the cycle again, we're going to paste the data down, constantly incrementing and making sure that we're not overwriting any data, right? At the end, we should get about 20 rows and we should see all of the file name information included as well. So let's close out of this. And... We will start over again. The actual copy paste takes place right here after this if else end if statement, which is uh, determining whether or not we're starting on a blank sheet or if we have been through the cycle a few times. Um, if we've been through the cycle more than once, we know we want to append the data to the bottom. But if we're on the first cycle, then we want to set our uh, paste destination to be cell A1. And this is the actual place where we do our copy paste. It's really easy. The range object is amazing for doing quick Excel things that you would always do, like, like copy paste, for example. Um, and so finally, what I'm going to touch on is this uh, source file name column. So again, as I mentioned in the beginning of this review, we want to add a column that includes the file from which those rows came from, right? And that's going to come in handy should we need to 
further analyze certain specific data files from our eventual pivot table, which is going to have the data from all four of these handy and, and, and ready for review. So what we're doing here is we're identifying the target range, right, which is going to be one column to the right of all the previously existing data. And what we do is write in the file name by taking advantage of this dot value parameter on the range that we define. Again, taking advantage of the uh, last occupied row number, last occupied column number, and a little trickery, right, because earlier in the process, we figured out where the paste should take place. So we know the first row there, um, and eventually we, we generate this range and we write values to it. So um, I'm going to show you the last checkpoint here where we're going to make sure that we can select the correct range where we'll be writing in those file names. So let's go ahead and put stop points right there. Actually, yeah, that looks good. And we'll click play. Okie doke. So what we want to do is make sure that on our combination file that we are correctly identifying these four cells right here. So I'm going to click play. Sweet. So the file.select gave us this correct four rows. And when I click play one more time, they're going to get populated. Awesome. Now let's click stop. I'm going to comment out this checkpoint again. And I'm going to run the whole thing each time. At the end of our script, you'll notice that we're going to close each data file and not save any changes, which makes sense here because we don't want to modify our source data at all. And the final item we're going to add to this script is a little message box at the end that lets the user know that the data has been combined. So let's run this whole thing from start to finish. Make sure that we get all 20 rows from all four files and we get a column including which data file each row came from. So I'm going to click play one last time. We're going to see it run through all the files really quick. Here's our message box, which is great stuff. It lets us know that the data is combined. We have this new workbook. All 20 rows came through as expected. And most importantly, we got our source file name column, which lets us quickly determine which rows came from which file, AT versus AU, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, which is going to be great in case someone else is doing the analysis and they need to figure out where your source data came from, right? So once you have all this data in one place, it becomes super easy to create a pivot table and start analyzing the data that you have. And with that, I think we're all set. If you're interested in more Excel VBA tutorials, please sign up at danwagner.co for my newsletter. I send out weekly-ish notes on how to develop VBA for common analytic type tasks like this. And of course, if you have any questions or concerns, don't hesitate to reach out. You can find all my contact info at danwagner.co. Thanks.